Hey guys, welcome back. And uh, if you stayed here this long, I do appreciate it. Uh, this is the third part of the video assembly. We talked about the different pieces of carbon. We talked about the aluminum pieces. Uh, again, these are not the front and backs. These are the side rails on the quad. Uh, there will be a build uh, build sheet, like a blowout. But this is what we're looking at here. That goes in there like that. And that makes the side of it. Crossbar goes across everything. Holds everything into shape. Screws go in one side and lock in the other, pinching it together. Crossbar clicks in underneath into the aluminum supports here and here. This piece here, you use those six millimeter screws that's where they go and then everything starts to assemble real nice so what we're going to do today is uh, get this frame finished up all built up uh, I'll add the electronics as they come in and thanks for sticking around and staying this long so let's get this thing going here we start off with this we put these three in there all goes together so easily all basically with one tool like I said in the beginning of the video the only thing I, I needed other than this wrench was my pliers to hold the back of that lock nut on the motor mounts so it has been very cold out up here in the northeast and uh, not too uh, happy the way the winter is turning out. We get snow, but it's too cold to really use. Because everything just locks right in real nice. Go ahead and cinch those right down. Let's see. There you go. Those three are in. You go fairly flush to the back. All right. Add the, the brace support. It goes in one side real easy. The other side. Give it a little spread and push and clicks right in. You may notice that now you need a screw that goes from underneath through the aluminum and into your motor. Well, with the kit that they sent you, you end up with enough screws to do that. They're nickel plated, so you don't have to worry about it coming out. But if you look, the extra screws you end up with in your kit I don't know if you can see that or not right here more than enough to bite into your motor and not go into your windings so that's pretty cool that they added those two screws so you don't have to sweat getting the extra screws Alrighty, and that was an eight millimeter that does all, that goes all the way through like that. The kit has several of them that you'll end up with at the end. Four extra actually. Actually, well, these two end up going together like that. And what's going to tie those together is this bottom piece, like so. Bottom piece has the tapered ends on the bottom. Again, those are for the M6 screw. I mean, the uh, six millimeter M3s. You're going to use four of those. Flip over your model, 
At this point, it doesn't really matter which end's front or back. It's a symmetrical build. All you want to do is line up your screw, Allen key, hex wrench, whatever you want to call it. That was probably painful to watch. There we go, she found it. All right. Now these holes down here, they are threaded. So that screw will lock right in there nicely. If you can see, don't mind my thumb. It's winter. Right in, locks in rather nice. Okay, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put my bottom standoffs in too. So, I'm going to grab another four of those M uh, M3 six millimeter screws for the bottom four screws here, and four of the supplied standoffs. I can't stress enough how important it is to straighten out all those parts that come in that bag. It seems like a lot, but every one has gotten used so far. You'll see in the uh, that drawing, the schematic, what they send you. It's something like 28 millimeters, uh, 12, 6 millimeters, 4, 10 millimeters. So you get a big bag of screws and then you get all the standoffs, four nuts. So it's it's a really complete kit. Alright, last one. As far as what I'm going to use for electronics, I haven't found the right combo just yet. It's kind of hard to get the ESCs to sit on the arms. Um, the ESCs that I have at least. Uh, the 35 amp, I'll show you in a minute. It doesn't quite fit inside this build on any of the angles. Which leads me to believe that they designed this over their newer hardware, the uh, 35 amp D Shot 1200 ESC iFlight put out, or possibly the Poseidon flight controller and ESC. They're all in one deal. Doesn't have a VTX on it, but the v2 or v3 might oops all right we're going now we're looking at something here right kind of see where we're heading with this this will be the front section so at this point we grab our camera mounts fat tab goes down Fat tab, thin tab, fat tab goes down, points go out. You see it's got these thin tabs up top. That helps lock in the top plate here. And I'm just going there like so, wherever I find it. Is that one? Where do you want to be? There we go. Operator. And at this point, you grab your last four of the M6 screws. 
or the M3 screws, six millimeter M3s. Let's go ahead and cinch that down. I'm not going to wrench these down too tight because I still got all the electronics to put in inside. This model went together rather quickly and uh, I was able to find the schematic online on the website there. Oops, what am I missing here? Might go line up. There you go. Now you can see what I'm working on here. That is the VX5 210 millimeter frame from iFlight. It's their vertical arm. I'm going to go grab my scale and we're going to get a weight on this little bad boy. You can see the slats here. Battery strap for either bottom or top. Oh, it just looks so good. All right, I'll be right back. We'll get the scale. All right, so we got our scale up. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll zoom in a little bit. It's on zero. Here is the frame. All right. Naked build is 126.8 grams, which isn't too bad when you're talking about a four millimeter frame with aluminum uh, pieces. There you guys zoom out. There you go. Well, once again, thanks for watching. This has been uh, the VX5 from iFlight's build. It's their Vertigo model. Thanks for watching.